Business leaders and intellectual business community, we come to the last sections of our discussions today. That is, how business schools lost their way. Means that how business schools nowadays becoming far and far away from what is expected from the business society, business community about their graduates of MBA students. And uh, we have talked several reasons why this happenings. And uh, in this last segment, we want to talk about what is the ideal thing or, and what will be happen in the future and how business schools should cope with the changing of environment and also with the demand of the future. So how is the best way to manage uh, business schools in satisfying the demands of the real business society? So Pa Datu, uh, what do you think Pa Datu? What is actually uh, the ideal way of conducting a business schools that can answer the demand of current and future demand of business society? I mean, by that way, by discussing this, I believe that uh, University Tun Abdul Raza was al already think about this and also planning to go this direction. Yeah. Please, Pak. Yes, okay. Thank you, Dr. Bayu. I, I believe uh, there are two things that uh, I would like to emphasize here. One is where should the future business school be going? And number two is the issue of what will be the contents or the curriculum right. of the future business school. And also, who yeah. will be the professors? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll come back to that also. Now, uh, in terms of what would be the outcome uh -huh. of the future business school, I think there are three elements which is very important uh -huh. in, uh, in business schools. Number one is we need to emphasize the self-identity or personal development of business school graduates. Mm -hmm. We must make sure that the graduates that we put in are those that have got the right attitude, the right aptitude and of course we have to make sure that uh, the graduates that we have also have uh, the kind of personality you know to work in an industry. The second point that we should also emphasize is that as a business school, uh, as a university, you have to promote the body of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So this is where in the business discipline we are promoting the diverse body of knowledge in the functional areas of marketing, mm -hmm. management, finance, accounting, production and mm -hmm. so on. Okay, And that's the second element which is very important. Right. Uh, these are the people that actually we need also to some extent we need scholars, we need researchers, we need academics uh, to create that. Now the other thing is the most important element is how business school can cope with changing environment. Mm -hmm. Now this is something that is very difficult to teach but it is something that we must uh, accept uh, and be able to cope with. Mm -hmm. Now while these three elements are important, it is also quite uh, critical for business schools uh, to incorporate among the three elements the values. Do you, do you agree that uh, you know uh, in 2008, I, s I read an article and I've been in the same thoughts for quite a uh, long time. The article mentioned uh, it's time for management to become a profession. So mm -hmm. it's time to make managers or management as a profession just like doctors or lawyers. Mm -hmm. So uh, what does it mean to become a profession? A profession means a society that has, you know, uh, uh, accepted body knowledge as a standard, a system that uh, ensure that I the individuals have mastered the body knowledge before being allowed to practice and also this uh, you know, uh, profession has a commitment to the public good and also there is a code of ethics that is enforceable. If you don't do that ethics then you are expelled from that profession by the society of the professions. Do you think management is uh, you know going towards uh, a profession? Yes, I, I believe uh, management in some uh, western countries is already a professional body. For example, if you look in United Kingdom, mm -hmm. there is what we call the British Institute of Management. Mm -hmm. And the British Institute of Management recognize the professionalism of management 
And when you talk about uh, professionals in management, it's not just general management. We, we realize the specialized areas in marketing, in finance and accounting, in production and so on. So in more uh, developed countries like uh, in Europe, they recognize this level of uh, professionals. Yeah, but it means that if, if we uh, accept this, as a profession, management as a profession, then it must be also recognized by the society or represented by the government. For example, uh, those who lead the public company should have certain criteria of this. Let's say should be an MBA, should have uh, you know professional qualification. It means that uh, he or she should be in the professional association that is recognized by the aso association. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, then you are not entitled to lead a public company, for example. I think this kind of rules has not yet seen everywhere in this world. Mm -hmm. What do you think if this kind of things, uh, you know, uh, enforced? I, I think one of the biggest problems in trying to make management a professional like professional bodies like medical, right. uh, accounting or engineering professional bodies, one of the problems is because I think uh, the code of conduct and the practice of what you meant uh, by professionals in management is still uh, ambiguous, mm -hmm. it's still not clear. Who, who, who do you, uh, how, how do you want to, what do you call that, uh, manage uh, financial managers? Do you charge if there's any problem in managing of uh, company funds, do you charge him as uh, uh, mismanagement or is it because uh, it is a financial issue so when finance uh, when you talk about org finance in organization it can be an accounting problem so does it go back to the accounting body or does it go back uh, or should that, that go to the management body so th this is the issue that is actually because management is not a simple discipline it is a multidisciplinary mm -hmm. area and because of the multidisciplinary area it covers a wide spectrum it covers psychology sociology accounting finance and all that and uh, well in Malaysia we have uh, to call it a roja you call it a gado gado mm -hmm. you know so basically this is something that we need to look at it seriously and 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 find out perhaps you know at mm -hmm. the level of a CEO then you can say a professional uh -huh. because at the CEO level he or she would have a comprehensive overview of all the functional areas uh -huh. of the organization all right. so but at the lower level it will be more difficult but yes. at a higher level it will be <coughs> relatively easy okay okay so uh, you mentioned that this kind of uh, professional body uh, enforcement will be more visible to the higher levels of people and also maybe can be more enforceable on the companies that hold the public interest. Yes, yeah? and the corporate Rather than governance. private interest. I mean, mm. if somebody wants to, you know, run uh, his private business, mm. though his private business also can also affect other companies as well, mm. but uh, mm. less risky rather than public mm. companies. Yes. Yeah. yeah? Mm. Okay, uh, that too, because of time. Time flies very fast, especially when we talk about this kind of. Uh, quite complex issue. Mm -hmm. So I have to make some summary of our discussions before we close this discussion. So uh, business leaders and intellectual business communities, that uh, today we have talked about how business schools lost their way that uh, created the problem that we have now, that the graduates from MBA schools are not really, what do you call it, uh, applicable, directly applicable anymore in the uh, in the way of their uh, working uh, situations that makes uh, many companies become dissatisfied because they expect more from the graduates from MBA schools rather than just theoretical knowledge that they have in this, uh, from their uh, educations and we have talked about there are quite several reasons for that first is that uh, there are many and more and more professors coming from academicians rather than the professional worlds. I mean, the professors from academicians is just okay if it is balanced by the professors from the real world business so that uh, these professors that are coming from real world business can give real, you know, experience and real touch of the business 
for the students rather than talking everything from theoretical point of view so the balance should be maintained should be in the very good balance that uh, the graduates of MBA schools not only knows the theoretical but also knows how to apply the theory into the real world and uh, second is that the merit system in the business schools that now are more geared towards the theoretical professors that means they value more on doc doctorate degrees rather than professional uh, real professional achievements of uh, business people that can teach in the business schools I think this is uh, something that should be considered by most of business schools so that more and more professionals real professionals that have a real touch in business world are attracted to you know contribute more in the business schools and uh, we also talk about the body of knowledge that is being taught in the business schools that uh, uh, the body of knowledge not only should consist the theoretical point of view but also the real application it means that case studies should be used in uh, business schools because case studies can give simulations of the real world uh, problems to the students but there are also some weaknesses in the current case studies that being used by medical uh, by business schools that the case studies are sometimes too old and from other countries the context is not uh, applicable in the students context and uh, also the case study provides a lot of data uh, more data than I than it can be uh, gotten in the real world yeah the data was uh, in the case study because it was researched by the persons who prepared the the, the case studies and uh, the last thing that we talk is that in the future the uh, business school should connect more to the real world by you know by giving more chance to the uh, students to have a personal development uh, to have the right body of knowledge and also to uh, equip them to face the changing environment of the business world that is our discussion of today so for you business leaders and intellectual business communities I hope these discussions will be beneficial for you. We'll meet again in the next CEO Reference program. Thank you very much. <laughs>